Could the medical community inadvertently have been harming patients with COVID by ventilating them too quickly? That is the question, and it was one I was hoping I wouldn't have to ask, but there's been a nagging suspicion in the medical community over the last few weeks that this may have been the case. Let's go back to the beginning then. When reports of a new virus first started emerging from Wuhan, China at the end of last year, the first question in many physicians' minds across the world was, oh my goodness, if this becomes a pandemic, will our healthcare system be able to cope? Will we have enough hospital beds? Will we have enough ICU beds? And specifically, will we have enough ventilators? As the dramatic surge of cases then unfortunately panned out across the world, the call from doctors and from other leaders became louder. Let's get more ventilators. We need more ventilators. It's all going to hinge on how many ventilators we have. This was, of course, understandable to a huge extent. It is, after all, how we treat respiratory failure and failing lungs across the Western world. We ventilate patients. However, as data has now emerged from many countries, they have shown abysmal survival statistics. Close to 70 to 90% of patients who are ventilated with COVID never come off. They die. Some of the worst statistics are from the Southern European countries, such as Italy. This is really important because it's far worse than the statistics for other conditions that are ventilated, such as a bacterial pneumonia. Now, it might be that patients with COVID are just overwhelmingly sick and unwell and weren't going to come off the ventilator anyway. However, it's left a lot of doctors asking the natural question, are we even doing the right thing with being so aggressive with early ventilation in these patients? Let's back up for a moment. Why do we even ventilate patients in the first place? Well, in a nutshell, it's because inadequate oxygen is reaching your bloodstream. Doctors will use different measurements to find out oxygen levels, including placing a little probe on the fingers or even measuring the oxygen in your blood directly. Typically, when it reaches certain thresholds, we consider intubation. The issue is that with COVID patients, the processes in the lungs, the inflammation, the fluid seepage might be very different to many other conditions that we're used to dealing with. Therefore, ventilating a patient, sticking a tube down the throat in towards the lungs and forcing oxygen in that way may not work the same way. So what else can we do apart from ventilation? Well, the most simple method, which is the initial method for lower acuity patients is nasal cannula oxygen, a little prong in each nostril delivering oxygen. This can only be used up to certain levels. Beyond that, other methods have to be considered. Unfortunately, many of these, such as continuous airway pressure or bi-level pressure, do run the risk of aerosolizing the virus. So they're risky to all healthcare workers who might be in the room. We don't like using them. We can also use other conservative techniques to keep patients on nasal cannula oxygen, such as placing them prone, that means on their belly. That is very good for respiratory mechanics, increasing lung expansion, and also improving blood flow to certain underperfused regions of the lungs. Another method that I've heard about, I'd like to see much more research on, is called ECMO extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. It's a method of delivering oxygen directly into the bloodstream. It's quite complicated as you can imagine, but I have seen some success stories with that. But all of these things are alternatives before we get to that final stage where we need to ventilate patients. I can't emphasize that enough. Ventilation really needs to be a last resort. Increasingly now then, the medical community is moving towards letting patients breathe on their own, typically on nasal cannula oxygen, and tolerating lower levels of oxygenation than they would otherwise. The fact that there was this huge rush towards ventilating patients quickly and early underscores a fallibility that we have in the medical community. When there's a strong tailwind in a certain direction, we all tend to jump on board. Very few doctors pause to just ask the obvious question when everyone was saying, we need more ventilators. Should we actually even be ventilating patients so quickly? Is it the right thing to do? We as the medical community should always be weary about being too aggressive, especially before adequate data is available. I'm going to tell you a story from my medical residency that actually perfectly illustrates this. Back when I was an intern, there was a huge push to having all hospitalized patients have strict blood sugar control. We wanted the blood sugars to be less than 110. 
Nurses were going around checking blood sugars. We were administering insulin. Our attending physicians were pushing for this. There were posters all over the place. And it was based on this one study, just one study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Something just didn't sit quite right with me. It felt too aggressive. It felt like it didn't make sense. So I decided to design a research project. It took me almost a couple of years to gather all of the data. I wrote it up into a research paper and you guessed it, the findings were that strict blood sugar control was actually not beneficial at all for patients. A more conservative approach was just fine. The paper ended up getting published and I actually won a national prize for my research. Within a year or two, other research had also shown similar findings and the national guidelines completely changed to allow a more conservative approach and blood sugar control of between 140 to 180 instead of less than 110. We were actually found to be harming patients by giving them insulin and making them hypoglycemic. I tell this story not to blow my own trumpet, but rather to highlight the fact that the medical community does have a track record of sometimes jumping on bandwagons way too quickly. When everything is moving in a certain direction, what we need is more doctors standing away from the crowd and just asking important questions, asking intelligent common sense questions, like are we doing the right thing? Are we being too aggressive in this case with ventilating COVID patients? I want to emphasize though that ventilation intubation is still very necessary as a last resort when there's complete respiratory failure. I hope I'm proved wrong on this, but my gut is telling me that physicians may have been too quick to ventilate patients across the Western world. And this whole focus, this whole drive on more and more ventilators. Let's wait for more data, more research to come out, but early ventilation on these patients may have inadvertently contributed to some negative outcomes.